Hello, hello. I am very excited for today's episode with a fabulous guest. Her name is Valerie Jones, and I'm going to introduce you here. Val is an expert coach for women worldwide. She helps women overcome their conditioning, programming, and patterns so that they can get their power back, step into their purpose, and create a life that turns them on. She teaches women how to manifest their big dreams by changing how they think, feel, and act. Val is on a mission to redefine the word word selfish and prove that when women make themselves their number one priority, it will catapult them into the adventure of a lifetime, one that will leave them breathless with excitement, excitement, astonishment, um, and astonishment at what they're capable of and in awe of the magic that life holds for them. Val also has a podcast called The Selfish Woman, which really drew me in, um, where she brings inspiration, real talk, and strategies that will get you saying hell yes to putting yourself first. And for anybody who knows me, You already will know that this is a topic that lights me up, that fires me up, and so I'm very excited for this conversation. So welcome, Val. So happy to have you here. Thanks, Millie. I'm so excited to be here and talk to you today. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to dive in and ask you, like, what brought you to this mission of redefining the word selfish? Oh, my gosh. So it's it's a really personal experience for me. It's been a personal journey for me, as well as just the experience I've had coaching so many women and seeing the common themes that we all struggle with. And that a lot of that is the people pleasing and being raised to be the good girl. And I certainly was raised that way. And like I always say, right, it's not that our parents necessarily had bad intentions. Most of most of our parents wanted the best for us. And yet so many women were raised with this conditioning and this message that it's good to be selfless. It's good to put yourself last. And we were modeled that by our parents, often by our mothers, by other women. And so we had this subliminal conditioning and programming that tells us that it's good to be selfless. It's good to put ourselves last, especially as mothers. I have three kids Mm -hmm. that are all grown up now. So I'm at the other end and really have had a chance to reflect on the programming and conditioning I showed up in for most of my life, which was the people pleasing and how it just didn't work for me and got me into a lot of depression, anxiety, unhappiness, um, toxic relationships, just because I never learned how to make myself a priority, make my needs a priority and to feel good about putting myself first. So, you know, that's just a little bit of the reason why I'm doing this. And then the other big reason is talking to so many women who are at whatever stage they're at in their life, but just feeling like things aren't working. Why am I not happy? Maybe I have everything like, you know, I have the kids, I've got the relationship, I've got the finances, but why am I still struggling? and realizing that their whole mindset is based on this this lie that it's better to put ourselves last and that that's what we're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And eventually we come to the end of that and realize that it's it's a trap and it's kept us from having the success we're meant to have, (laughs) from reaching our highest potential, but also to have better relationships too, right? It all comes from putting ourselves first. So when I started figuring that out for myself, a lot of things in my life changed Mm -hmm. and, uh, my life looks completely different. When I started putting myself first, I started making choices that I wanted to do that made me happy. And it was a big surprise to me that I was living a life that really wasn't the one I wanted. Mm -hmm. And, uh, So that started for real for me about three years ago. And um, I have a group of friends that we meet once a year, wherever we are in the world, we have a Zoom call and we say, you know, what's your word for the year? And and at the time I was actually living in Spain. I had moved to Valencia with my second husband. We had just gotten married the year before in Rome, had this amazing romantic elopement in Rome. We ended up moving to Spain and we'd been there for a couple of years. We bought our dream apartment. We renovated it. Like we had this dream life. 
Mm -hmm. And yet I was so unhappy and I couldn't, I didn't know why, because I'm like on the outside, everything looks great. Right. Um, Yeah. Because we're looking at ourselves like on paper. Yeah. You know, checking the boxes. So then there's a lot of guilt about it. There's a lot of guilt around not feeling okay or not feeling fulfilled or happy because like, who am I to not be happy when I have all of this amazing stuff? Mm-hmm. And, and I got on this call with my friends and I was, and, and I, the only word I could think of for that year was selfish. And I, I was like, I struggled with it. Cause I was like, mm-hmm. why would I want to be selfish? This feels so counterintuitive. I don't get it. It's a bad thing. Mm-hmm. but I could, it wouldn't let me go. So I was like, I don't know, my word is selfish, whatever. And they were like, cool, well, let's see what happens. And after I got off the call, after I'd like actually said it out loud, I was like, well, what if I actually tried it as an experiment? And for a whole year, the only choices I make are the ones that I want to make. Mm-hmm. And I decided to do an experiment for the year and it turned out to be 2020. Amazing. And it took me on this wild ride to where I am now and my entire life is different. And it's all because I decided to put myself first, make myself a priority and do some really scary shit that I had no idea where I was gonna be led through this Mm -hmm. journey of intuition and starting to trust myself. So that's why I called it the selfish woman because it was my own decision to really trust my gut, trust myself and start letting myself be led by my inner wisdom. Mm-hmm. instead of that message of, you know, just like make everybody else happy and everything will be fine. Don't rock the boat, stay in status quo. And um, so that's where it, that's where it came out of. And, and I, I really am seeing it resonate with so many women who mm-hmm. are just like, hell yeah, that's, yeah. that's what I want. <laughs> totally. Exactly. 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 There's so much there. Like as you're talking, I'm like, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> right. Because when, uh, when, when women create this life from the outside in, right. Mm. Like checking the boxes mm-hmm. and like, I'm supposed to do this and this is what's supposed to bring happiness. Um, often they don't understand why it's not working. Right. And, exactly. and, and, and then they're left feeling like, well, what have I done wrong? And then they feel shame, like, oh, well, I should be grateful. And who am I to not feel grateful? Right. And so that's this whole nasty spiral, mm-hmm. but it's because we're taught to come from the outside in rather than the inside out. Right. And yeah. we're so worried when we get to that point of, which I believe is just a, a purely a disconnection from self, right? Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. cause we, we become these versions of ourselves that we feel like we're supposed to be in. In the meantime, we prune our, we prune everything about our authentic self uh, in the process that we're left looking in the mirror, like who the hell am I? Like, who is this person staring back at me? Yeah. Um, but we get to that point where we're like, I have no idea. I have no idea what, what's wrong with this life and what's wrong with me. Yeah. And so you, you, I'm sure you, that's what you're talking about, right? Is you came to that point and how did you come to this realization that it was that you needed to be more selfish? How did you get there? You know, I have been on a self growth journey for like about 10 years before that of really working on a lot of my limiting beliefs, healing a lot of my trauma, um, healing a lot of old wounds, dealing with my first divorce, Mm -hmm. you know, so I'd done a lot of the work to grow and I, and I'd experienced a lot of results from that. And, Mm -hmm. um, and I was doing quite well as far as like mental health and, Mm -hmm. and, you know, my career and things like that. But what was missing, which I didn't even really know at the time was a deeper connection to myself I kind of thought I had it handled, you know, because I'm like, I've done all the things I am good. But moving to Spain was actually my husband and I agreed that it was going to take us so far out of our comfort zone, moving to a different country, different language. We really wanted that. We wanted that experience of removing all familiarity from life because we both were on a growth adventure. Mm -hmm. And I think we went into it with a, a little bit of cockiness of like, this is going to be amazing. We're going to get out of our comfort zone. We're going to have all this growth, right? And it did happen, but it was so unexpected that what happened for me 
was getting out of my comfort zone was coming to that place of realization that like, I'm not happy. You know, I was isolated. Uh, we started having relationship problems and I start, I started seeing myself just kind of come to a place of that depression. And I was anxious all the time. I wasn't doing well and I couldn't figure it out. Mm -hmm. And when I picked the word selfish, I was at a point where I was like, I think I need to do something big here because if I don't, I don't know if I'll make it. That's how bad I was feeling. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, so when I picked the word selfish, I really didn't know what I was doing. I was just like, I'm just going to try something different because nothing I'm doing is working. So let's try this. Right. And, um, the first thing I did was I came back to Canada for an extended visit to see my kids who mm -hmm. all live here. And, um, I was like, I bought a one-way ticket. So the first thing I did was I went to Paris for a week. So I was like, well, that sounds selfish. Nice. Let's do that. Yeah. And then I came to Canada and I was just, I had bought a one-way ticket and I was like, I don't know what's going to happen with my relationship you know, we needed a break. We both agreed we needed a break, came here and then COVID happened in March. And it was like, literally you're not going back even if you wanted to at that point. Mm. And it was like the universe just gave me this opportunity of like, just be with yourself for mm -hmm. one minute. And, you know, and um, I ended up like staying at seven different Airbnbs and hopping all around and really like letting my intuition guide me. I lived on an Island in a cabin for a month. Mm -hmm. I just did a lot of things that I would never have done before. Mm -hmm. Um, because I had this opportunity and sort of this forced, you know, um, distance from, from going home. And what happened was I realized I was sitting in this cabin on this Island and going like, I've never lived alone. I, I, I actually didn't even think about it until I sat there and I was like, Hey, I'm like 51 years old and I've never lived alone. And it was like this forced isolation to be with mm -hmm. myself in a way that I'd never been before. Mm -hmm. And it was that, that started showing me, Oh, this is what I've been missing. Mm. Sitting by myself in silence, you know, and just facing the stuff I haven't wanted to look at. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if there was really any one turning point, but it was more just like a something's got to give here. Mm -hmm. And so like, let's try this. Yeah. It, it's like throw caution to the wind because you're in like this do or die moment of mm -hmm. I don't, I don't have a, another option here. Like I just can't go on this way. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> and as much as I, I, as a coach, I encourage people to, seek growth and change when things are seemingly good in your life. Don't wait for that moment, that crisis. Yeah. But often we do need some kind of big shaking event to shake us awake to ourselves. And Seeing that I wasn't really aware really of back in because I had done so much work on codependency mm. and, and people pleasing already. But it's really easy to fall back into those habits if you haven't done that work to really love yourself and trust yourself. Mm -hmm. Yes, those are such big, important concepts like self trust. I, I don't think is given the airtime that it deserves at all. Um, and like, even just the, the word that the negative connotation of the word, like selfish, like if mm -hmm. we're not people pleasing, aren't we selfish? And, mm -hmm. and why is that such a bad thing? Like we all know from a logical standpoint, uh, we can't get from an empty cup. We all know, you know, the, the, um, the analogy of like putting on your own oxygen mm -hmm. mask, mask first, but in the real life situation, are we doing those things, right? Like if you really were on a plane, would you really put your own life mask on or oxygen mask on first? Would you, mm -hmm. or would you feel too guilty to do it, right? It becomes a cliche that we yeah. all say, but it's really hard to do. And uh, mm -hmm. I know for me it was, and because it's such a subconscious programming Mm -hmm. that will say, yeah, it's good to, it's good to put yourself first. It's good to, you know, um, prioritize yourself, but 
over and over and over, look at your life and look at your choices and you'll see what you really believe to be true. And, and I saw that what I actually believed was that I, maybe I don't trust myself. I don't deserve to put myself first. And I had to reckon with that. I think self-trust isn't a sexy thing to talk about all the time because, you know, we want to talk about all the fun stuff, but for me, self-trust was the biggest thing for me that changed my life. And having to follow my intuition in 2020 of like, where am I going next? What am I going to do next? And nobody was there to help me make that decision. Nobody was there to like, tell me like, I think you should do this or why not try this? I was all by myself and I had to really trust myself. And I had a moment of like, I don't even know how to make a fucking decision on my own, let alone trust myself. Yeah. (laughs) So that was a huge part of it too. And the more I just felt the fear and did it anyways of like making an intuitive choice. I started trusting that part of me a little bit more mm-hmm. each time. And, yeah. the, and then as that self-trust grew, those intuitive choices started to become easier, but mm-hmm. it really is about facing the truth of what we believe and not just what we say. And those subconscious beliefs are so insidious, but they run our lives. Yes, exactly. And it's going to come up to a moment where it will be a difficult decision to put yourself first, right? Because what happens when we are people pleasing is that we have a lack of boundaries, right? Mm -hmm. Really, like it really is this lack of boundaries. And so the thing about creating new boundaries and starting to put yourself first is that the people who benefited from your lack of boundaries will inevitably feel discomfort Mm -hmm. around your new boundaries, (laughs) right? So it's knowing that and it's preparing yourself like, okay, I know this isn't going to be easy, um, but I'm, I'm dedicated to this, you know, path of, I actually, I, in some of my um, courses, I reframed the word selfish to self full because it's Mm -hmm. like, I'm really full of me. And this is my authentic self Mm -hmm. that I'm choosing. And, you know, like, oh, she's so full of herself. That's like a negative expression Mm -hmm. too. Right. But it's like, well, what's wrong with being full of me, like authentically me loving me, you know, like we're shedding all this old BS yeah. Um, I think in this, in this time. And so my question for you there is as you took this path, as you had your year of selfish, um, what kind of, um, you know, experiences did you have with pushback from people in your life and how did you navigate those? Mm, that's a great question. The biggest pushback I would say wasn't even a pushback. It was a pushing in from with my relationship with my husband, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, eventually he came to Canada in the summer of 2020 and we went into therapy. We're like, Hey, if we're going to make this work, like I'm going to need some change. Mm -hmm. And I started standing up for myself and are, like you said, setting boundaries and being like, I deserve more, actually, I want more. And Mm -hmm. so let's, let's fight to get that. And we, we were in couples therapy for the rest of 2020 and the, the pushing in was him really working to save the marriage and save the relationship and doing everything he could. And, and yet at the same time, I felt myself leaning out and feeling like, I feel like my path is on a, in a different direction. And there was this push pull of like, am I strong enough to stand firm in that even when he's really wanting to make this work? And, you know, it was, it was, that was my biggest struggle. And then in February of 2021, I, I said, it's over. Like I ended the, I ended the marriage and that was the hardest thing because we'd only been married two years at that point. And mm-hmm. we had this like, you know, externally, it looked like this romantic fantasy relationship. Mm-hmm. And so to leave a relationship, not because there's any big problem, but because I feel like I'll be happier without it on my own. Mm-hmm. That's really hard. And I, and I had to really lean into a lot of self-trust and courage with that. Um, and so I'd say for me, that was the biggest relational issue. I had full support, honestly, from everyone else Mm -hmm. just cheering me on. Um, but that was tough because it meant that, am I brave enough to trust myself to let this relationship go and walk into the unknown 
simply because I feel like that's the right thing for me. Yeah. And that and was, that was hard. Yeah. That sounds, that's in, this incredibly hard, right? That's incredibly mm -hmm. hard. And it's knowing that we can do hard things, right? Knowing that yeah. even if you feel scared is all hell, mm -hmm. <laughs> that it's going to be scary. It's okay. You don't have to overcome the fear. You just get through it. And on the other side, you look back and that's building self-trust too, right? It's like totally. just going through going through with it and looking back and going, oh, I did that, you know, yeah. I did that. And it's a muscle, right? It's a muscle. It's that a you muscle build. and you can't build it unless you do it. And like you said, you got to just jump in and do it and, and, and trust your gut. And that was the biggest thing I, the biggest move I made at that point. And we had a beautiful ending to our relationship and lots of love and respect. And he's super happy now. And like, I'm super happy now. Right. So like, it's, it really was the right thing for me. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, at the time, you don't know that you're just in that place of like this, this, I think this is right, but I have no idea. And it's scary. And what's going to happen. And, and mm -hmm. I don't know. And, you know, but the more you build evidence for yourself that you can trust yourself and, and that everything's going to be okay, the more that you see that, okay, like that self trust builds a little bit more each time. And, uh, so that was, that was a huge turning point for sure. For me, mm -hmm. that is huge. It is very huge. Did you have anyone in your life that was kind of like, what happened to you? <laughs> like what's going on with you? <laughs> um, yeah, I did, but more like, uh, you seem really happy. Like what's going on. And, you know, a lot of, a lot of people don't want to ask when you start changing up your life in a big way. Because mm -hmm. they're like, they, maybe they, they're scared of what the answer will be, because mm -hmm. it might, as you said, it might make them uncomfortable, mm -hmm. right? So I think a lot of people were just looking at me and going, all right, she's doing some weird shit. What's, what's up with Belle? And, you know, and at the same time, I, after I ended my marriage, I moved to Vancouver. So I did a big move, mm -hmm. got my apartment here. And that was, this was all also a huge manifestation mm -hmm. of a lot of visualizing and, and mindset work and trusting and finding this apartment that I'm in, which is just amazing. Um, moved to Vancouver and then I actually lost 55 pounds after that. Wow. Yeah. So it was evidence for me that the more I put myself first, the more I make myself a priority and take care of myself, the happier I am. And the happier I am, the more things work out for me. And the more things work out for me, the more they work out for the people in my life, because I just have so much more energy, more to give, I'm happier. So yeah. it's just become this sort of chain reaction of, of outcomes mm -hmm. that all started from that, that choice to be selfish. And it's just proving over and over that the more I do that, the more I find the things that fill me up mm -hmm. and commit to those and commit to myself first everything else works out. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's, uh, it makes life way more fun too. Yeah, totally. Exactly. Like, who do we want to be around? Do we want to be around the tired, resentful, disconnected woman? Or do we want to be around the vibrant, fulfilled, you know, overflowing woman. And it, yeah. it's, it's this weird lie we tell ourselves constantly is like, if I just push a white knuckle it a little bit more, <laughs> like I, maybe I'll have time to do both. Maybe I'll have time to like do everything for everybody else and somehow manage to like fit myself in right at the end. It reminds me of, um, there's like a strategy, like a business finance strategy about like paying yourself first, right? Like mm. you have to pay yourself first. And it's, it's similar here. Like you can't just fill up your calendar with everybody else's shit and then hope there's time at the end of the week or month or whatever to squeeze in your own desires and self-care, yeah. right? Like you need to sit down at the beginning of the month. I mean, you don't have to do anything anyway, but, um, you need to put it in there first. Mm -hmm. You need to have the other things work around you and your life and, and believe and trust that like, yeah, you're not going to be an asshole mm -hmm. <laughs> at the end of the day. And maybe some people might think you're an asshole, but is their opinion of you more important than your opinion of you? Right. Totally. And 
I mean, I love how Glennon Doyle says it, right? She says, um, like, selfish means full of self, like you were saying, mm. and selfless means less of self. So yeah. really, we're being told to be less of ourselves. Yeah. But what the world needs is women who are full of themselves. Yes, because, yes. Because we're the women, the women who choose to be full of themselves are the ones who are going to change the world. They're going to transform their relationships with others. I agree. And it's so exciting to see women get that like I did and, and like you did, like to get that when we are full of ourselves, everything else works out. And I remember being a mom of three young kids and I didn't do that. I really prioritized them because that's what I thought a good mom did, right? Like put your kids first and my, my needs came last. And um, I mean, it, it just does, it's not a great formula for success because when the mom isn't happy, the kids know it. Mm -hmm. right? The kids, the kids pick up on that, the stress, the tension. Also, we're modeling to the next generation what a woman is and how a woman should treat herself and how women should be treated. So when, you know, kids are growing up seeing their mom being depressed or resentful or exhausted, we're modeling a powerful message to them of what it means to be a woman. And you know, I, for me, it's, it's really all about that for my adult kids. Now they're seeing their mother, um, taking care of herself, being happy, being lit up, having a pur purpose, and it's giving mm -hmm. them permission to do the same for their own lives. Exactly. Yeah. And it's never too late. You know, it's, it's never too late. Um, and I truly believe what you said about like women taking back who we really are. I think that's, what's going to change the world. I think that's, what's really going to make a huge impact, um, on our society and on the way things are run, you know, because mm -hmm. yeah, it's the patriarchy, but it's also women not stepping into their own agency in a way that's in integrity with yes. ourselves, right? Like there's the, uh, like fighting fire with fire of coming back and like, no, screw you. Look at me. Or there's just like the, here I am, mm -hmm. you know, like this, uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. And, uh, you know, if you have feelings about it, then they're not up to me to manage. Cause I just renounce codependency. Thank you very oh, much. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh <laughs> yeah. I love it. You're so right. Because, um, that's when we get our power back is when we, we understand that we're not responsible for anyone else's experience. We're only responsible for us. And then we can let that other person just have their experience of our, of our boundary or our choice. Um, and actually to deal with our own internalized misogyny too, of like, what is that messaging that's kept me quiet or small or not wanting to rock the boat. And the more I step into my own power, the more it just feels more natural to have an opinion, to show up bigger, to, you know, rock the boat in whatever relationships yeah. in, in on social media, in my business. And that has a ripple effect too. So it, does. Yeah. it all comes back to our own relationship with self and when, and putting that first. Mm -hmm. And um, that's really, I think the way that we can not only change ourselves, obviously, but have better relationships with everyone in our lives and then have a bigger impact on the greater community and the world mm -hmm. really. So, yeah. Yeah. And I think that a lot, like what comes up for me is that a lot of women may be worried about confrontation. You know, they may be worried that people are going to call them out or say this or that and be disappointed in them or their choices. And, and um, like I was saying before, like it doesn't have to be this, aggressive thing you know what I mean like it can just be simply within yourself because when somebody if somebody does happen to come to you and say like oh you're being selfish it's only in your reaction of defensiveness mm -hmm. that's going to make that feel like a conf like a real confrontation you mm -hmm. know what I mean so it's coming to peace with that idea even too of like yeah you know people are gonna have opinions about this but like I am so clear in my own heart that I know I got to do this for me or else 
I don't know where I'm going to end mm-hmm. up, you know, mm-hmm. I don't know, I'm going to wake up one day and just run away or mm-hmm. like, you know, do something rash. So it's preparing yourself um, and knowing that you can have that like calm presence of mm-hmm. take, this is me, you know, like take it or leave it and not like take it or leave it, but like, <laughs> yeah. you know, take it or leave it. Like, I love you, bless and release. Like the people who are meant to stay, they're the ones who really saw you at your truth and those who are meant to go like everybody's in your life for a reason, a season, or a, mm-hmm. what's the last one? I forget what the last one is. My daughter <laughs> a always said a reason or a, yeah, I something forget. else, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. It's so true. And, uh, learning to say no and learning how to say no in a healthy way, learning how to set boundaries Mm -hmm. And that's all our own work. That's all our own responsibility. But what isn't our responsibility is the other person's experience of it. And the more that we feel comfortable in our own skin, the more we trust ourselves, the more we love ourselves, the easier it is to stand firm in what we know to be true for us and to allow other people to have their experience and disappoint others. I know for me, that was a huge fear was disappointing other people as a, mm-hmm. as a good girl. And I call myself a recovering people pleaser. Yeah. Cause I think it, I don't know that we ever fully get rid of it, but we can be in recovery. I was taught to, to not disappoint people. That was a really bad thing right and um and so subliminally it just became a huge fear of mine and then I started shape-shifting to be what I think others wanted or needed me to be Mm -hmm. and um the fear of disappointment can be such a huge thing and I think that ties into the fear of confrontation and what will people think of me and Mm -hmm. that's a huge thing that a lot of women struggle with because we've been taught and conditioned to be who we need to be, to be pleasing for others. To value the opinions of others yes. over our own opinion yes. of ourselves. And then we're becoming all these things that we're really not to try to gain the approval of other people. Mm-hmm. And that's how we lose ourselves. Mm-hmm. And so how we find ourselves is coming back and going, well, I need to get to know myself again. I need to... Yeah trust myself again. I need to love myself first again. And as I do that, I will be able to stand in that place of disappointing others so that I don't disappoint myself. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I was a huge abandoner of self. I just was always abandoning myself for the sake of others. And, Mm -hmm. um, when I stopped abandoning my inner child and that part of me that I always sort of shoved aside because she didn't fit in or she, you know, was too loud or too whatever. Mm -hmm. The more I stopped abandoning myself, the easier it became to stand in my truth in a, in, as you say, like a powerful, yet loving, open, compassionate way and, and allow someone to be disappointed if I'm not doing what they want. But that's a huge journey to reconcile ourselves with Mm -hmm a part of us that, you know, we, we abandoned because she wasn't accepted or maybe she was hurt and scared. And so we just kind of left her behind. And it's, it's kind of about bringing all parts of ourselves back into mm-hmm. a holistic place of connection and everyone, everyone gets a seat at the table, right? The inner child and the, all the parts of us, our future self, Um, and then at at the head of the table is our inner being who gets to say like, all right, this is where we're going. This is what we're doing. This is how we're going to get, get where we want to go, where we're meant to go. Mm -hmm. We all have a huge purpose, whether that's raising the next generation or building a business or whatever it might be. So how do we do that with integrity and honesty with ourselves first? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so true. It all starts from with it, it all starts from inside of ourselves and cultivating that relationship with with our truth and our authentic self and all of that stuff. So pivoting a little bit, my next question for you is, how, do you think that being selfish is required for manifesting your dream life? Ah, I do. I do think it's required because 
if I'm not putting myself first, number one, I'll just speak from my own experience. If I'm not putting myself first, how do I know what I really want? Mm -hmm. Number one, because what I think I want might be actually what I want based on what other people want for me. Yeah. So getting really connected to my own desires requires me to actually be selfish and be like, what does Val want? What does Millie want? Right. What do you really want? And maybe it's not what other people think you should want, or maybe it's not what you think you should want. So I think that's the first step. And then the second step for me has been, okay, so if I want to manifest whatever my desires, you know, I've got to feel the emotion of having that thing. I've got to, I've got to be in that vibrational state that will attract it. I can only get there if I'm taking care of myself. I can't manufacture it from a place of depletion, exhaustion, um, people pleasing. Like I can't create pure joy, elation, excitement, like the high vibe emotions, unless I'm really giving myself what I need to cultivate that. So for me, that's been a lot of meditation and journaling and you know, being in nature, like I've had to really find the things that help me to be in that state, that high vibe state. Mm -hmm. And it requires prioritizing my time, mm -hmm. carving out time in my schedule to be like, no, I'm not taking a call or I'm not going to do that thing because I need to, you know, get outside. <laughs> I need to get out for a walk or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, and if I was in that old place of defaulting to, not taking care of myself, I think it's really hard to get yourself into that place of believing that you're worthy of your desires and also feeling the way you need to feel to attract it into your life. Mm -hmm. So I think absolutely like being selfish, making yourself a priority is pivotal to manifesting. And I think, and I know for me, that's been my experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think joy, like you, you brought up joy, um, that is definitely very much in alignment with like the self, right? Like, how can you have those moments of joy? Because joy comes from inside, right? Mm -hmm. Like, happiness is more based on like ex ex the external circumstances, which can be very fleeting, right? But that those moments of pure joy and gratitude that bring tears to your eyes, mm -hmm. those come from connection to self those come from like knowing who you really are and feeling feeling grounded in it so that you have the spaciousness to experience that right you have the capacity you're not so bogged down with the worries and the shortcomings and the to-do lists and the this and that because you've created that space for you to actually experience the full range of your humanity and I think, you know, joy on the, the top end, but also, also allowing yourself to experience and, and, and knowing you have the resilience to experience it all. Too, absolutely. Right? Absolutely. I mean, most of 2020, I spent really dealing with my lower level emotions. Yeah. And, so you know, I think a lot of us did. <laughs> 20, 21, right? 20. Yeah. Uh -huh. And not feeling bad about it, not feeling yeah. guilty about it. That's exactly what you're saying, right? Allowing it all, but processing those lower level emotions so we can more quickly and easily clear them out and, and come up to a higher level. But I mean, I, yeah, I spent a lot of 2020 walking around by myself, listening to, you know, music that got me in touch with a lot of my anger and like I had to really do a lot of clearing of, of negative emotions so absolutely mm -hmm. and and again that's a selfish thing to do right it's yeah. putting myself first to say like I'm going for a walk I'll be gone for an hour because I got to deal with my shit and and it's responsible it's, yeah. it's it's radically responsible as well yes. I, I, love I, I love that I use that all the time radical responsibility what does that mm -hmm. mean right so it's all about like shaking us out of our comfort zones of, you know, going through the status quo and just not being awake to what is really going on inside mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then doing the work. And, yeah, and it's really, like I said, it's, it's not the sexy subject, but it's the one that gets us the sexy things, right? We um, want to, <laughs> I, you know what, I even beg to differ there because my mindset on that sexy, unsexy thing has shifted recently. Um, I picked up a book called Existential Kink. 
Oh, um, I've heard it, of that one. It really shifted my view around sexy and unsexy because there is something very sexy about the shadow, I think. Mm. And there is like this, this dark sort of enjoyment that we get, also known as secondary gain out of our issues and our problems and our negative emotions. So even just taking that and going like, well, I'm even going to own it on a next level. And that's, that's even like very radical. Right. Um, of like, Ooh, how is like, how is my dark side kind of kinky? Right. So it's true. It, it, it's scary. Right. Like doing that work. It's like, Oh, like we feel like no one wants to talk about shame. No one wants to talk about mm. these things. Cause it's like, can't we just, all get along, you know, (laughs) Um, but, but yeah, it's, it's both, it's both. And, 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 and I love that we're talking about this. I love that this is what's coming to the forefront in so many ways for women of today. Um, And I have, I think two more questions for you here. The next being, what do you think is the biggest myth um, or misconception in manifestation that you'd like to see? eradicated Mm, that's a great question what is the biggest myth I think I always bring it back to my own experience and when I started studying manifestation like what I thought it was and then what it really is Mm -hmm. and I think at the beginning I thought it was like you know believe it and you'll receive it like that's the in part that's true but I don't think it is completely true because in order to believe it I have to do so much work to shift everything that is believing something different. So while believe it to receive it is true, like once you believe it, you can manifest it. I think I saw it as positive thinking, right? It's like, just, just say the affirmation, you know, journal the journal, what you want, keep working on your mindset. And I did that for like two years of like, I I believe it, I believe it, you know, and I thought I could create a belief simply based on like what I talked to myself about or the affirmations that I said or the auto suggestion. Yeah. (laughs) And it didn't work. Right. So it took me to a deeper place of like, all right, so just simply saying affirmations and being positive isn't working so maybe I really don't believe it and then I had to face the truth of like oh shit I actually don't believe I'm worthy of this I wonder I'm not manifesting it so Mm -hmm. I think you know that's for me what I had to go through of like what I thought it was required versus what's really required yeah it's just a lot deeper yeah because when we're just running in the direction of positivity and we're not willing to look at the negativity and the darkness and the and and all of that stuff we're sweeping it under the rug Mm -hmm. right and what you resist persists Mm -hmm. so we can't not look at it right Mm -hmm. it's it's so required um it's it's so interesting it's just a lot of reframing right yeah for sure it's a lot of reframing and I think it it's a lot of um like you said not not sweeping things under the rug, which again, coming back to the good girl persona, <clears throat> we're really good at that. We're really yeah. good at, you know, everything's fine. Everything's great. And you know, when, when I was in that darker place within myself, externally, you would never know it, right? It's like, everything's fine. Everything's great. Da, da, da. Mm-hmm. But inside it was a mess. <laughs> and yeah. so it really requires coming out of that and being like, everything's not fine. And in order for it to be fine, I got to be not fine for a while. And if it's okay to not be okay. Yeah. To recognize it and acknowledge it and investigate it. Those are like key principles for self-compassion, recognize, acknowledge, investigate, nurture, like the whole little acronym of that there. And you can't, so some, the fear may be, oh, well, if I spend time looking at the negativity, that's going to expand, or that's what I'm going to manifest because what you focus on expands, but Mm. you cannot release that stuff unless you look at it and it's not that we're doing so in order to over identify with it if it's coming up Mm -hmm. it's coming up to be released and to Mm -hmm. be to be let go of it's not coming up because we're clinging to it anymore right we're done with it we're yeah 
And I, I think it's interesting because when I think back to when I was clinging to the negativity, it was like I was in a comfort zone of sadness or depression, but not really aware of it. It was just where I gravitated to. And it was like the path of least resistance. So for me, that was how I was clinging to it was just staying stuck in it for years and years and years. Mm -hmm. But when I actually started getting serious and taking radical responsibility of how I felt, that was when I was really intentional about acknowledging how I felt and then finding the path to clear that out, whether that was hiring a coach, going to therapy or, you know, finding my own tools to do that. So I think that people do feel like, oh, if I look at it, that means it's going to expand. But the reality is you've been sitting in it for a really long time. Yeah. already. So how about be intentional yeah. about it so that once and for all, you can kind of clear that out. Yeah, exactly. Like, like, let's look at it from a different perspective, not that we're dwelling on it, but that we're like, okay, what is this here to teach me? Mm -hmm. And like, sit with it, have tea with it, you mm -hmm. know, like, let's chat here, like mm -hmm. this, you know, self-sabotaging part of myself. I know your intention is actually to try to keep me safe or whatever it is. Yeah. What lesson do you have for me so that you can be on your way and I'll, exactly. you know, give you a snack for the road. Yeah, you know? it's, exactly. not, it's not that we have to meet those parts of ourselves. Like I'm going to eradicate this from me. Like it's, it's acceptance still, right. It's the full picture. Befriending all the parts of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My final question for you that I ask everybody on my podcast is what are you currently manifesting? Mm. Good question. Well, my word for this year is magic. Ooh, yeah. I got tingles. Oh yeah. And I'm already seeing it. Okay. Right now I'm manifesting and you know, I've started my podcast. It's a baby. I started it in October, the selfish woman. And, um, one of the things I'm manifesting this year is really blowing the doors off that and bringing in fabulous women who are ready and who can be examples for us of what it means to be selfish and, um, I'm seeing that happening already this week mm -hmm. in a way that gives me that feeling, right. That, that warm, exci magic. exciting feeling of magic. And so I'm really focusing on that this year and also just bringing in more clients into my private practice. Um, and you know, travel was one of the things I was manifesting, but <laughs> I think I'm going to hold that till 2023, maybe so. Well, we never know what can happen, you right? You never know. You never Who know. <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful. I love it. I love I love that idea of magic because it's it's available at all times too, even though, you know, the world may seem so mundane at times or scary at times or whatever, but there's always somewhere to look, you know, that we can find something magical, whether mm -hmm. that be, you know, like somebody who loves eyes or, you know, the, the crystal that you have on your desk or the plant in your living room, like there's magic everywhere. You just have to be open to it and to be open to receiving more yeah. magic and more miracles. So that's absolutely wonderful. there's magic everywhere. This is magic. Yeah. You and I creating this amazing conversation is magical. So yeah, we can find it anywhere. And, and that's really what I'm intending to create more of this year, whatever that looks like. That's beautiful. So let's finish off by you sharing with the audience where they can come and find you um, and anything interesting that you might want to let them know. Yeah. So uh, you can find me on Instagram. That's where I hang out the most at Ms. Val Jones, M-S mm -hmm. Val Jones. You can find me on there. Um, I also have an awesome Facebook group that okay. is called the Radical Women Collective, and it's just a fun place to hang out and we share and we inspire and encourage each other. So that's always something that anyone can check out and find me on Facebook. Um, and then I have a couple ways if you're interested in um, being in my world. One is a great four week course that is um, study as you go. It's four videos and it's mind, mindset manifesting and money. And it's a great four week program. If you want to man, manifest more money, I take you through all your limiting beliefs that might be holding you back money mindset. And it's a, like I said, it's a four week video that you can do as you go. So you can find that on my website and that's Valerie at 
as ValerieJonesCoach.com. Um, and then the last one is I've always got a couple one-on-one -on -one spots for people who are really serious about taking radical responsibility, doing this work, clearing mm -hmm. out the shit and really freeing themselves to learning how to be selfish. And Beautiful. so they can, oh. they can reach out to me on Instagram, ask me about that if they're interested. Thank you so much. You really caught my attention with the name of your podcast. So I'm wishing you all the best with that. Um, I only started this podcast back in August. So mm. I'm with you on it. It's such an exciting adventure yeah. um, and so fun. So I wish you all the best with that. I can't wait to listen to some more episodes. And thank you again for coming on. Thanks so much, Millie, for having me. It's been awesome.